Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off with some things from AMD, the first of which is regarding the 5500 XT. So, what do we have? Well, we have some store pages which have surfaced on the Chinese retailer JD.com, and these links were helpfully posted on Twitter by Momomo, whose name you should be very, very familiar with by this point. And we can see he's given us links for an Azrock SKU and two Sapphire fire skews here as well. Now unfortunately none of these actually show any specifications other than the fact we can see 8GB variants here but we do see price and release date so according to these listings we're going to be seeing this card very very soon by the 12th of December and it's going to be at a price which roughly converts to 212 US dollars. So not going to be too long at all before we find out how legit this is because well it's literally this time next week. Oh, and one thing that is definitely worth mentioning real quick regarding the 5500 XT is a screenshot which was helpfully posted by Komachi in response to these listings. So basically what we can see here is the specifications for the card and they heavily suggest that the 5500 XT is just going to be an overclocked RX 5500. So you can see the specs on screen so we can see the base clock of 1685 MHz, the game clock of 1737, and the boost clock of 1845. Just something to tuck under your hats for this one. But we've got something interesting still up next from AMD regarding last month's Steam hardware survey. So, as I'm sure you all know, this is a voluntary survey that you can basically send Valve over your specs to your machine and they do like a nice little graph that shows you, hey, here's what everyone's using on Steam. So once again, this is not indicative of everyone on Steam, let alone everyone who games on PC. Obviously, most people who game on PC game on Steam, but still, just keep it in mind is all I'm saying. Anywho, what does it actually show? Well, according to the information, AMD processor usage is now at 20%, which is actually an incredible jump, considering if you look back to two years ago, they were at 8%. Now, obviously, Intel still has the lion's share, but there's nothing to be taken away from AMD here. That is a huge increase of AMD processors being used. And once again, it's not necessarily everybody on Steam. And of course, not everyone that has a Ryzen processor is necessarily using it for gaming. So this has been a steady and slow increase for AMD ever since they started releasing Ryzen processors. So we have seen, you know, jumps when Ryzen came out, and then we saw a jump when the 2000 series came out, and then also we've seen an increase ever since Ryzen 3000, you know, all I've been talking about the last couple of days is how much of a tear AMD are on, you know, in the mindfactory.de results and the amd.com and .co.uk um, best-selling CPU listings, and obviously that survey of people in the EU that said they would prefer a um, AMD processor, so... Once again, Intel's still in the lead, but AMD are definitely starting to play catch up a little bit. But let's move on to our final AMD topic, which is regarding Zen 4 5NM. So what we have is a report from the China Times, but I saw this report thanks to the folks over at WCCFTech.com, so you will find both articles linked in the description below this video. So basically what the report shows is that things are going very well over at Camp TSMC, and... 5NM is basically going really, really well. And the first three customers have already been knocked in, which is AMD, High Silicon, and Apple. And what's really cool is that the yield for 5NM has already surpassed that of 7NM. And we're going to be expecting AMD's products to be landing in early 2021 with mass production for the chipset scheduled in 2020. So what the bigger yield essentially means is that it's going to be viable sooner than expected so we can begin the transition from the current gen, that being 7NM, to 5NM sooner than we thought. And further according to the report, the 5NM process has crossed the 50% yield mark. And they've even increased the monthly production capacity from 50,000 units to 70,000 units with 80,000 units not far in the future. And according to what we already know, the 5NM process is 1.8 times as dense as 7NM, can increase clock speeds by 15%. So, obviously, this is pretty damn good news for AMD, of course. It's good news for Apple and High Silicon as well as, one of, as well as any other future companies that end up using TSMC's 5NM node. 
But still, nice to see that the yields have been so good for 5NM that, barring any insane amount of demand that AMD can't keep up with, we shouldn't see supply issues being caused by yield problems at least. But as I said, that was our last AMD topic for this video, but we're going to move on now to NVIDIA as they had quite a bit to say in their Credit Suisse Annual Technology Conference this year. So we're going to move on to the first of the two topics I have from RTX. So basically, as I said, these comments were made during the presentation at Credit Suisse Annual Technology Conference this year by the CFO Colette Cress. And they were basically asked quite a few things, obviously, but they asked basically how well the RTX series has actually been doing. This has been a bit of a question mark hanging over this generation for NVIDIA because NVIDIA keeps saying, yes, it's doing really well, and obviously it's doing well, but obviously the higher price tag has understandably deterred a lot of people from getting it or waiting for the price to come down and yada 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 but it definitely I think made people, people wait or even turn away entirely at launch when the prices were announced obviously it's a bit better now with super and obviously the prices have dropped on the originals but despite all of this Nvidia says that two-thirds of all GPUs sold are RTX based. So they said, quote, overall of boards that we sell in desktop, two-thirds of it are now with ray tracing. So we're now really pleased with the market adoption of it, and of course there is absolutely more room to grow. We have cards that fit every single type of price point as well as every single type of overall gamer. So you can overall buy a card in the $100 range and as well as all the way up to $1,000 to participate in ray tracing. The way we see it, in the future, ray tracing with the underpinnings of gaming and PC gaming. So I think we're just in the initial stages and the amount of ray tracing that we'll see in the future, not only for PC gaming consoles and others, will continue to fuel the overall gaming market. So the TLDR of all of that is basically out of the GPUs that they sell, two thirds of it are now ray tracing. So NVIDIA are selling way more RTX based cards than they are, say, the older generation, like the 1080, 1080 Ti generation. Now, obviously, we're talking a lot about the current generation, but what about the future? We've heard quite a bit about what AMD have planned for the future with Big Navi and all that sort of stuff, and whisperings about the following generation, of course. But obviously, we don't know much at all about the future generation. You know, is it going to be Ampere from NVIDIA? We assume so, but there's a lot of people that thought it might be Volta or even Ampere for this generation, so they may throw a wrench in the works on that one. But they were asked about the future, which obviously would involve a 7NM based GPU. And they said, and this is once again, was Collect Cress at the same event. Quote, we are always busy at work building our overall architectures, whether that be our architectures as a whole, and it tends to serve many of our different markets, whether that be gaming or professional visual or our overall data center. So fear not, we're working on our technology. Our innovations and our process technology has been exceptional over these last years. So stay tuned, we'll always have something for you in the future, but we'd like to surprise everybody with our overall roadmaps when things come out. Now, the focus in terms of what's more important, the overall processing and the overall development software. We still see a lot of people focused in on, in PowerPoint, is trying to compete with our overall performance that we see in our overall processes. Our, our, our processes not only have been top notch, no matter what industry they've been in, there is still continuous improvement that we can do both in the current node or in terms of the near future. So she did continue to go on a bit there, but I feel that's the most pertinent segment of what she had to say regarding this. Unfortunately, they didn't come out and say anything concrete, really, just that they like to surprise everybody with their overall roadmaps when things come out. So what that means <laughs> could mean anything. NVIDIA wants to surprise us with the 7NM GPU announcement. So, hey, surprise, it's out now, you know, something like that. But we'll have to see, of course, what they have in store, but still interesting stuff. So our final topic for today is regarding the Xbox Scarlet. Now you may have seen the rumours circling that the Project Scarlet dev kit is behind that of Sony's, which of course we have seen leaked images of and actually heard a fair amount about. But if a recent tweet of Phil Spencer is anything to go by, that is simply not the case. He said, quote, and it started. This week I brought my Project Scarlet console home and it's become my primary console. Playing my games, connecting to the community, and yes, using my Elite Series 2 controller. Having a blast. Great work by the team. 2020 is going to be an incredible year. 
So, of course, we don't know any new information regarding the specs or anything like that, but it does seem that the dev kit is in the hands of Phil Spencer, and if he's already using it to play games as his primary console, connecting to things, it seems that the hardware for this machine is pretty much settled. So, it's the other things that they're going to be working on with the console, like perhaps the placement of fans, you know, all that sort of stuff. There's all sorts of moving parts going on inside a console, but the raw specs, it seems, is decided. That's finished. It's got to decide on design and everything else that goes alongside it as well, both exterior and interior. So it seems, judging from this tweet, that those rumours were untrue. But of course, we'll have to wait and see who comes out on top next generation. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.